Good morning, folks. It is September the 22nd, the first full day of fall, and I just want to remind all of my good listeners out there to keep calm and panic, which is obviously how the postmodern political elite are spreading fear in order to gain control throughout the Western world. In an opinion piece written by Mirko Bagaric of Swinburne Law School in the Australian on September 14th, Professor Bagaric states, COVID-19 is not transmitted by human movement. Its transmission is facilitated by human contact. The inability of Premier Daniel Andrews to understand this simple distinction has resulted in more than 5 million Victorians being subjected to the longest and most oppressive lockdown on the planet. It is the reason so many Victorians are questioning tyrannical restrictions on their freedoms, which are imposed by an increasingly radical leader. This politicization of the police highlights the dangers inherent with introducing Big Brother laws. Migrants to Melbourne who survived martial law under communist dictatorships are now feeling the same helplessness as they did in their home countries. This should send chills down anyone's spine who understands how parliamentary democracy works in the Anglosphere. We have the tradition of limited constitutional government where the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary are separate and used as systems of checks and balances to prevent one another from exceeding their proper and legal mandate to govern. And Dr. Bargaric, who is a law professor, states unequivocally that the premier has exceeded his legal mandate to govern, and yet the legislature and the judiciary haven't been able to stop them. This ought never happen where there's limited parliamentary constitutional government. In Kantian philosophy, there's an idea about schema. It's a concept which is common to all members of a class, a general, or essential type or form. I fear the besser visers, the ones, the clever ones that think they know better. And even though they can't order their own lives well, or wouldn't live their lives personally in the way that they run the state, they're, the contradiction that exists within themselves is unknown to them, or if it is, it's pathological. And they believe that they're smart enough, even though they contradict their own principles, to tell us how to live our lives. The state of Victoria has become the canary in the gold mine. Our liberty is under assault. So in this vlog, I want to discuss why the Besser Visas, the know-it-alls, are not driven by a love of the downtrodden, but rather of what Orwell stated about them. The truth is that to many people calling themselves socialists, revolution does not mean a movement of the masses with which they hope to associate themselves it means a set of reforms which we, the clever ones, are going to impose upon them, the lower orders, or as Hillary stated, the deplorables. On the other hand, it would be a mistake to regard the book-trained socialist as a bloodless creature entirely incapable of emotion. Though Selvin giving much evidence of affection for the exploited, he is perfectly capable of displaying a hatred, a sort of, sort of queer, theoretical, in vacua hatred against the exploiters. 
If we are to confront the Besserwieser know-it-alls, we can kiss all. F if we are unable to confront the Besserwieser know-it-alls, we can kiss all foundations for democratic constitu constitutional liberty. Fare thee well. I'll read a little bit more of uh, what Orwell stated. That quote was from chapter 11 of The Road to Wigan Pier. It is highly recommended reading because in order for us to understand all points of view, it is under necessary to understand why people, well-intentioned people like Orwell, was indeed a socialist himself and why also he became disabused with the, with the direction in which socialism was going. Apparently, he failed to understand where the rule of law is applied and where workers have their rights enforced by the rule of law, that the sort of abuses that happened in Yorkshire could not happen. But apparently, Orwell didn't, didn't come to realize that although his later work certainly indicated that he knew where socialism was headed. Just get down to the piece that I want to read. The fact is that socialism, in the form in which it is now presented, appeals chiefly to unsatisfactory or even inhuman types. On the one hand, you have the warm-hearted, unthinking socialist, the typical working-class socialist, who only wants to abolish poverty and does not always grasp what that implies. On the other hand, you have the intellectual book-trained socialist, who understand that it is necessary to throw our present civilization down the sink and is quite willing to do so. And this type is drawn, to begin with, entirely from the middle class and from a root, rootless, town-bred section of the middle class at that. Still more unfortunately, it includes so much so that an outsider, to an outsider, it appears to be composed of the kind of people I have been discussing, the foaming denouncers of the bourgeoisie and the more water eerie or beer reformers of whom Shaw is the prototype, and the astute young social literary climbers who are communists now, as they will be fascists five years hence, because it is all the go. And that dreary tribe of high-minded women and scant sandal wearers and bearded fruit juice drinkers who come knocking towards the smell of progress like blue bottles to a dead cat. The ordinary decent person who is in empathy with the essential aims of socialism is given that the oppression, impression that there is no room for his kind in any socialist party that means business. Worst, he is driven to the cynical conclusion that socialism is a kind of doom which is probably coming but must be staved off as long as possible. Of course, as I have already suggested, it is not strictly fair to judge movement by its inheritance. But the point is that people invariably do so, and that the popular conception of socialism is colored by the conception of a socialist as a dull or disagreeable person. Socialism is pictured as a state of affairs in which our more vocal socialists would feel thoroughly at home. This does, not, this does great harm to the cause. The ordinary man may not flinch from a dictatorship of the proletariat if you offer it tactfully. Offer him a dictatorship of the prigs and he's ready to get into a fight. So he, he's clearly identified the authoritarian, illiberal, intolerant, controlling nature 
of the elite. They've infected all of our political institutions, this class of people, the Besser Visers, the know-it-alls, and they're using the power of the state unconstitutionally to control you. I've placed all the links to these articles down below. Please read The Road to Wigan Pier, particularly Chapter 11 and Orwell's Criticisms of Socialism. And I invite you all, on this first day of fall, when an election is looming and lockdowns, more lockdowns are coming, to keep calm and panic.